In terms of um, treatment for older adults with diffuse large B cell lymphoma, I think it, it, the time is ripe and we have enough data to not give a blanket recommendations for all older older adults. So I was alluding to this fit, unfit, and frail um, kind of separation of uh, patients above the age of 70. So this is based off a large Italian study that was published in JCO, Journal of Clinical Oncology, a few years back. And what they did was that they used something called a simplified geriatric assessment, which is essentially four things, ADLs, activities of daily living, IADLs, instrumental activities of daily living, a SERS-G score, which is the uh, illness uh, score for geriatrics, and age. Um, based on that cutoff, patients can be classified into fit, unfit, and frail, um, and treatments are decided based on that. So an easy thing to remember is that if somebody is above the age of 80, they are already unfit or frail. Um, and then if people are between 70 and 80, this is very important because um, you the eyeball test is not enough. You see somebody and you think they're fit, but when you actually subject them to formal assessments, even their comorbidities might uh, put them into the unfit category. This is very important because in the study, 50% patients were actually unfit or frail, um, which is not what we would imagine in real life. Um, and what we know is that if somebody is fit up to the age of 80, they should, like I mentioned, get the same treatment as their younger counterparts. So for most patients with advanced stage diffuse large B cell lymphoma, it would be globally, it would be RCHOP, rituximab, and CHOP. In the US, we do have polituzumab and RCHOP, which is approved for an IPI score of two to five. So higher risk TLBCL. Um, the good news about this regimen was that um, an older patient subgroup analysis that was um, that was um, uh, presented at ASCO recently showed that older adults actually do have similar results. So, so I think this regimen is pretty well tolerated in older adults and should be given in patients who have high risk TLBCL uh, if they're fit. For the unfit or frail patients, with the unfit patients, it's been shown that reducing the doses of RCHOP, so we call it mini RCHOP. Mini RCHOP is the way to go. In frail patients, depends on what's causing the frailty. If it's the disease and the symptoms that are causing the frailty, it's still okay to try curing them with mini RCHOP. But this is an area of big unmet need is um, they do have a lot of side effects with this treatment. So it's uh, it, we need to do more clinical trials and we need to do more research on our frail patients. Um, in my practice, uh, there is a study called the Polar Beer Study, which is looking at older adults with mini RCHOP versus polituzumab RCHIP, mini RCHIP. So basically they are trying to replicate the Polaric study, but in older adults. So there was some preliminary data at EHA, but I think if I have a patient with higher risk DLBCL, I feel comfortable giving them Polar mini RCHIP rather than just mini RCHIP. So those are the nuances in terms of what's available, what's standard of care therapy. The other thing I would like to mention, which is really, really important, is the importance of pre-phase treatment. So that means while you're waiting for these patients to um, uh, get their staging work up and getting situated for their actual chemo, start patients on steroids. T traditionally, we do 100 milligrams of prednisone, but if somebody's diabetic and you know that they're not going to tolerate such high doses of prednisone, even 50 is good. Uh, and uh, a study from MSK, which was led by Richard Lin, it showed that uh, doing even seven days of these pre-phase steroids does reduce um, markers of frailty, such as IL-6 and just a senescence-associated secretory peptide, and uh, it does improve tolerance to subsequent chemotherapy. The other thing is liberal use of growth factors, allopurinol, uh, whatever you need to do to get these patients through, uh, especially in the first cycle, is very, very important. And lastly, I know this was a long-winded answer, but lastly, there is no role for um, CNS prophylaxis in most patients. Most older patients with DLBCL, even, even in our younger patients now, it's become very controversial, but there has been a lot of retrospective data in older adults showing the harm of CNS prophylaxis rather than any benefit.